we have 28 national institutes of health agencies. Of those 28 institutes, we don't have a single one called the Institute of Nutrition. Why is this? Same story. Nutrition has never been uh, accepted throughout the last century and a half. That's part of my new book, by the way, is the history of this. We've never had uh, nutrition as a science, as a medical science accepted, either in medical schools or in doing research at NIH, which provides most of the funding. We have 28 institutes. I think it's 27 now. But in any case, we have that number of institutes, each one of them dedicated to something like heart disease, cancer, obesity, aging, so forth. We don't have one. It's called the Institute of Nutrition. And the paradigm within which we live that prevents the nutrition from being taught in the medical schools is the same as the fact that it's left out of the research effort as well. In chapter 17 of the China study, what did you mean by big medicine? Whose health are they protecting? Well, big medicine, like big agriculture, but let's talk about medicine for the moment. Big medicine is basically for the purpose of developing drugs to sell. It's a money-making machine. It's really what it is. And the idea there is that if we get sick or we have some difficulty of some sort, that somehow if we knew what the mechanism is, we could develop a chemical called a drug to deal with it. That doesn't work very well at all. And so as a result, big medicine is again operates under the premise that the best way to treat disease is with a drug. That's where all the money is. And so as a result, not only of that fact, but also because the physicians and researchers who are thinking about how to treat disease, they're not taught nutrition. So they're standing in isolation. So I, well, I question that. Uh, because those drugs that we're taking we have the highest drug users in the world per capita, number one. We spend the most money, number one. Yet, we stand 44th in the world in terms of life expectancy. 44th. We're not getting our money's worth. Chapter 10 of the China study was called, What are the wide-ranging effects, bone, kidney, eye, and brain diseases? What was that chapter about? Well, that, that was intended to show that this effect of the whole food plant-based diet, if you will, it was intended to show that it, that that idea is not targeted to one disease. That idea is very broad. It's nature itself. And so when it's operating to, let's say, resolve disease problems here, it operates there too. So there's a broad range of diseases that uh, for which there incidentally is pretty good e evidence in the literature on a lot of these. So it's not targeted to one disease at a time. It's a broad range of diseases. Do we need dairy products to have strong bones? No. We do not need dairy to have strong bones. That was said for many years again by the dairy industry for obvious reasons. But in reality, when we compare the amount of calcium consumption, which mostly comes from dairy, we compare the amount of calcium consumption against, let's say, bone fracture rates, which is an indication of osteoporosis. The higher the calcium intake, the higher the bone fraction rate. Very, very dramatic. In the China study, chapter eight, common cancers, breast, prostate, large bowel, colon, and rectal. Tell us more about that. Well, uh, those in chapter eight, I think it was, if I recall, uh, we're mostly talking about reproductive cancers, breast cancer, uterine, uh, prostate cancer in the case of men. Uh, it's really interesting. And I don't know how to explain this, but it is uh, m more than a, a passing interest. When we consume dairy, which comes from a reproductive organ of the cow, when we consume it, lo and behold, we learn that we start having cancers of our reproductive tracts too. Now, is that coincidence? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. Something really kind of, I, I, I don't have the answer to that, but that's really what happens. Why 
isn't nutrition taught more in med school and how much is taught in med school? Well, nutrition is not taught in medical schools. Not one medical school in the United States teaches nutrition. Oh yes, they have some lectures and a couple of them have maybe 10 or 15 lectures possibly, but it's the old model. It's not the kind of nutrition that I'm talking about. And in reality, those short courses, if you will, they appear occasionally in, in medical schools. They're usually elective. You don't even have to take them. So nutrition is just simply not offered professionally. In chapter 16 of the China study, what did you mean by government? Is it for the people? Well, I spoke to that, of course, before, but the, the government uh, is, in fact, since 2010 especially, uh, government is represented by politicians that have been bought and paid for because of the circulation of money in the system. We know that today in spades. And so they're beholden to their supporters. So I, I'm really deeply, um, I, I don't know, I, I feel very deeply about this, that we don't have the government that we deserve to have. Not, I mean, we don't have the government that once we did have, especially after what's been happening here in the last year or so.